Hello and welcome to In Great Company, the platform where we bring you impactful conversations with thought leaders to help you thrive in business through their advice, tools, and resources. My name is Ramona Cedeno. I'm a CPA and founder of Fibric, an accounting practice servicing the businesses in, in finance, not in finance, <laughs> servicing companies in the technology and professional service sectors. I love finance, so, you know, I usually just go for finance and accounting. Um, I'm here with Mike Lee, the president of Fundica, an award-winning online funding tool. He's also a partner at a leading R&D consultancy, and he will be talking to us about the five W's of funding. I can't wait to hear what he has to say. Um, he's an expert in the field. And as you know, as a startup founder, and as a small business owner, you know how critical capital is to the success of our businesses. And even more critical, I think, is to be ready to go seek funding, apply for a loan or, or apply for a grant. And Mike will talk to us about that today. Thank you so much, Mike, for being with us today. Thank you, Ramona. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, I feel kind of honored to, to speak on this. Um, and it's, uh, yeah, we've known each other for a little while now, and it's been an interesting journey, and I'm, I'm happy to share whatever I can today. Great. Thank you. Thank you. And tell us a little bit about how you help uh, small businesses and tech uh, companies in the area that you are an expert in. Sure. So, um, so my I've been around for a little while, um, and I've basically I've kind of done this interesting transition where I started out as an engineer, really working in companies, doing all that, and then I moved to the uh, the financial side. Um, you can say the dark side, but no, really just the financial side. I really want to understand the big picture. And over the last uh, twenty years, I've really been involved with funding, so from small to medium sized to large sized companies, and really across the entire spectrum of funding the government side, the grants, tax credits, the lending side, and, and the equity side. So I've had the pleasure of seeing that. I think like you, Ramona, I've primarily worked with technology companies. Um, you know, very much, you know, a lot of companies that have very high growth. Um, so I've been very fortunate to participate in some of these, these companies. Uh, so it's been a, you know, a great journey. Um, what has kind of, what's kind of changed is when I started out um, on the, in the funding area, at the first, I really worked helping companies and we helped them with all kinds of different funding you know, solutions, helping them find funding, helping them get it more efficiently um, and do all those things. And what quickly became apparent is that identifying the source of funding um, can often be a big challenge. So they spend a lot of time trying to identify the source, the, the, the most relevant source of funding for them. And we kind of, I realized that I was spending a lot of time on that and that was really something that a pain point I think could be solved in a, you know, through what we have today on the internet, through all the different information technology available. So um, it started originally as a kind of community project, but then five years ago, we founded Fundica as a corporation, independent corporation. And we started basically putting together, aggregating all the different sources of funding available and trying to put them in a very organized, relevant way for entrepreneurs. And we've always felt and to do this properly, we really have to be comprehensive, up to date and relevant, especially relevant. If someone's come to use a search engine, they really want it to be relevant. So that's kind of the, the path we've gone on over the last little while. And thank you, Mike. And I think one of the things that I find interesting about Fundica is that the model, right? So there is a little bit of self-service service, uh, component to it, isn't, isn't there? Yeah. So what we realized in building this is we actually went through a few different business models. So when we first built it, we charged entrepreneurs to come on the platform and use it. Um, but we realized that charging someone money for someone trying to look for money is kind of hard. Um, and then we went through a phase where we built, we had different sponsors come on and put ads on. That was interesting, but you really need pretty good volume to do that well. It, it was challenging. And then we did a, a third iteration where we actually went out and started building events around what we're doing online. So bringing these different funders together. So we're doing it online and we're also doing it in events. Um, fortunately, we kind of ended that in 2019, just before COVID. I think one way or another, it would have ended. And, and that was an interesting model as well, but it's also a relatively competitive space uh, getting out there with events. So we've really focused on the online side and our most recent kind of iteration 
and really the one we've gone with and has gone the best for us is we license the technology to different entrepreneur supporting organizations. And when I say that, I mean that, you know, financial institutions, you know, accountants, accelerators, governments. Um, and we started in Canada, but now we're across North America. So we've, we've kind of gone through different, you know, paths, interesting path along the way. Awesome. Thank you so much for that. And let's let's get started. So talk to us about the five W's of funding. Let's start with the first one. What is that? Sure. So anyway, here's a little bit more of me. I've worked obviously in a lot yes. of funding. Um, and, uh, you know, over the last 15 plus years, I think when you get over 15, it's just kind of 15 plus. Um, so today we're going to go through the five W's of funding. Um, it's really, a, I would say, a funding 101 type exercise for so those that know funding well it may learn some little points but the this is really meant for someone who's kind of looking to say hey should I go get funding or not um, so it's kind of a first look at things so first thing yeah when to look for funding um, to me this is the most important thing that I will present today uh, I see far too many companies they're going out there and saying hey I want to be the next Facebook I want to raise a five million or you know fifty million dollar round um, that's nice. It's interesting. It's what catches headlines. Um, but almost all those companies actually followed what we see here, really followed this kind of funding path, we'll call it. And they didn't just go get 10 million of funding. There's a lot of steps along the way. Sometimes it happens quickly, but they still go through the same steps. So what I want to detail here is kind of the pre-funding. So that's the top half of the slide and then the funding orders at the bottom. And this is kind of like monopoly where you want to go around the board and you need to go around the whole board to kind of collect your 200 when you go by go. So it's a key thing to kind of do. And I think something that's not always intuitive, especially to first time entrepreneurs. So the first thing is really making sure you have a commercially viable product and market. Um, very easy to do today with all the technology we have. Uh, and even if we don't use a lot of technology, just in doing, you know, old fashioned kind of market research, a lot can be done, but that really should be done. Um, it, you know, you need to kind of talk to dozens, if not hundreds of people to make sure this product, okay, there are people who are going to pay for it. There's a market for it. You know, there's a real interest for it and it's big enough. Um, so really check that out as far as you can. The second thing is building a core team. So as we move along the core team, if it's a technology company, you probably want someone who's on the, the business side and so on the technology side, uh, some may actually need several core team members to make it work. Um, so that's really the second thing. So if you have that and it's like a yes, okay, I've got the commercially viable product and market, I've got the core team, then you go to the next thing. So the kind of dirty little secret is that you need a little cash in hand to get a lot of cash. So I know it seems kind of ironic to hear that, but that's what you need because you need to get through the funding process. So a little cash in hand either is what you've saved, you've got some love money, so that means family money, perhaps an angel, investor so someone nearby an individual investor or perhaps you just bootstrap it which means you have cash coming in from something else either as a consulting business or a side business or perhaps one of the, the partners is funding it and you're all kind of going to share ultimately what becomes out of it so if you get through all of those and you can kind of say you, you've got them then you go to the bottom half of the slide and you say okay now what should i go for look at government funding first uh, for some people, that's an automatic reaction in certain areas, certain places. It's it's, absolute, but I think it generally it should be there because it's the cheapest, it's the fastest to get, um, it, it's it's really the best funding available if there is funding for you, if it makes sense, and of course if there's an ROI. So make sure that if you're applying for a grant, if it's only five hundred dollars and it's going to take you three weeks to do, that doesn't really make sense. But there are a lot of excellent government funding programs out there. And we're going to talk further about where we can go take a look at that later on. The next thing is, and I CF is cash flow history or assets. So if you're going to go get a loan, they're going to look for cash flow history or assets. Again, these are kind of private sector loans, public sector. Sometimes they may, you know, allow a little bit of flexibility, but in the private sector, it's they, they want to, they, that's what they want. And then finally, and I kind of say this is with a smile, but it's also true. You go get VC or angel funding if and only if you need it, because it is the most expensive, it is the most complex, and it is the biggest pain in the neck, all this type of funding. So if you don't have to go get that, even better. Um, but uh, if you do need to raise a lot of money, this would be something. Of course, everything you 
get from a private sector, they're going to expect for you to pay back with interest or with a multiple on that. So uh, important to keep that in mind. You haven't won the game when you get the $5 million. You've just upped the ante uh, of what you're doing. You've just gone to a bigger poker table um, is what's really going on. So, so this is, to me, the most important slide, you know, when to look for funding. Do you find, thank you, Mike, and I, this is so helpful. Do you find that um, small business owners and tech founders um, struggle figuring out when is the right time to go for funding? Yeah, I often do. Like I, I meet a lot of businesses that haven't really checked off on the boxes on the top. So, you know, they don't have a team in place. Uh, they're going to see some big VCs. They're a one, one person show that's not going to work so well. And I see a lot of them where they don't really have that viable market that viable product or the market that's for that product. So um, they really need to test it out well. If they can explain, you know, in 30 seconds or a minute that this is an amazing opportunity and they can validate that somehow, then they probably need to go back and do a little more homework on top. So I do see this as, you know, a, a problem with, you know, especially for young or first time entrepreneurs. Yes, I have noticed that uh, when it comes to the team, in, in pitches that I have been partici uh, that I have participated, sometimes the team doesn't seem to be aligned properly, or the synergies uh, are not the right synergies. When you have two founders, or the, the founder brings someone from the leadership team, so that comes across immediately to investors uh, during a pitch, uh, you know, uh, session. I believe. Yes. 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 All right. So, um, what types of funding exist? Um, so these are the different types of funding. So we start with a tax credit, grant, loan, loan guarantee, equity, other, um, tax credit predefined. So it's what's kind of in the law. Um, if you get it, you get it because it's in the law, not because you're a nice guy, not because you know people it's really predefined. And you generally get it after the costs have been incurred. Sometimes there's some things you need to do before, but generally speaking, you just get it after. And usually it's when you file your tax return. A grant, there needs to be societal benefit. So they're going to give it, they're going to provide a grant to you because you're helping society in one way or the other. Um, maybe it's hiring a youth. Um, maybe it's, uh, you know, trying to help the environment, but there's going to have to be some motivation. Always important to keep that in mind. What exactly is their motivation? Because if you're applying to someone to, you know, hey, I want to, you know, make a, I'm looking to actually help on the clean tech side or the environmental kind of benefits, then that's what we should be talking about if that's the fund you're talking to, not necessarily about other things. So um, grants, loans, similar. And then on the private side, so uh, basically it's going to become, you know, return on investment. So that's what we're looking at. And the further down you go, the higher they're going to expect. Um, so again, tax credits at the end, grants, loans, loan guarantee generally before this estimate, and then equity or other can be any time. So thank you, Mike. Do you find that, uh, in some cases, um, the time a business has been, uh, in operations is critical to go for a grant or some tax credits, or is that not relevant in, in some cases? Yeah, no, very relevant. Uh, I think when you're looking at a loan and you want to show that you have cash flow history, which you talked about last slide, you need to have, you know, some history. You need to have so many months in operation with successful cash flow. Uh, certain grants are going to require you to be in, have been in business for a certain period. Same thing for tax credits. So the time is very important. Um, and I, I talk about years or even how many months for some of these would be a key, key criteria. Thank you. So next thing we kind of just, just to go, go one layer deeper. So, you know, what types of non-dilutive funding exist? So they kind of go into four different areas. Um, so it's kind of the workforce side. Um, so everything to do with uh, hiring, training, things like that. That's generally the biggest bucket of, of kind of non-dilutive. And I kind of say non-dilutive, primarily government funding we're talking about here. Um, and then on product development. So that's everything from, the, you know, the R&D to working with universities to kind of marketing. Um, so if you're kind of marketing at a state or out of the country, there's some 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 funding for that uh, or capital expenditure. So there, those, these are the different types of non-dilutive funding that exist. 
and they all have a, 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 a lot of value. And I know that uh, startups that are in an accelerator or an incubator where they don't really are, you know, they don't get cash, that sometimes they don't put a value to these things. And these benefits and these resources and the free product development and marketing, there is such a great value in that. And that should be viewed as also funding and capital that's available to your business. Yes, absolutely. So why do they fund you? Um, so we kind of look at it. There's different motivations. And again, very important to understand them. Tax credits is really the, the tax law. It's very simple. Uh, do you fit into the tax code or not? Uh, grants, you know, they're going to look generally that you have some kind of expected revenue. You have a reasonable bu business model. Often it's getting in line. So the place you are in line makes a big difference. Um, so understanding when that grant comes out and when the money is available uh, is, a, is a key thing. On the public loans, similar thing. Now they're kind of expecting a little bit of return. Hopefully, uh, they're not going to be too fun. They're now going to look at a broader set and they're going to say, hey, I want to look at all factors. The private loans, they're getting a little bit. Now they're looking to really make money. But what it's about for them is security. So they really want to make sure, first and foremost, they're not going to lose any money. And as we talked about before, they're going to look for either you have assets that make things secure or you have you know, cash flow, which has been you know, recurring cash flow that lasts so many periods, which they can kind of bank on. So be the private loans, then you get further down. And again, I would even say less desirable as you go further down uh, because they're expecting a bigger return on their, uh, on their investment. So you go there if you need to, but only if you need to um, angel investors. So these are individuals that have often done well in business for themselves. Um, they're going to focus mostly on do they believe in what you're saying? You know, do they believe that you can actually deliver? And they want to make sure that they're going to be there when you go cash flow positive. So if you're losing money, they're going to put some money in. They don't want to be just the first ones to put money in as you continue to lose more and more money and then effectively get diluted. They want to make sure that you're going to they're going to have you're going to have enough cash to go cash flow positive. Generally, that's the way they work. Venture capital, they're expecting the highest return. Um, you know, they're really looking for companies to go pretty large. They're looking for what we call traction. So you show that you put a dollar in, two dollars are coming out. Um, and they're interested in making sure the time to exit can work within the length of their fund. So the funds have different lengths. Important to know if you do talk to venture capitalists, are they just they just got a whole pile of money? Are they kind of in their middle years where they're reinvesting and maybe a few companies, or are they towards the end of their fund where they're just trying to get everything settled and pushed out? So that's kind of you know, you know. Why do they fund you? Understanding their motivation. And you, you you keep repeating, and I think it's so important that you say the venture capital, the investor, angel investors is the most expensive type of funding, but most founders go to that first or want to go for venture capital funding first. And it, I think it's so, I don't know how you know to bring home the point that we should look at these tax credits and the grants and private loans uh, first before we go for VC funding, if possible. Right, exactly. So uh, how do you determine your funding priorities? So this is kind of what, you know, people generally get as they go along. So it's a really early stage company, we're looking at accelerators, some hiring, then some training, then you may do some R&D, then you may be exporting, and then you're going to be making some perhaps large capital purchases. So this is just kind of slide saying, okay, what kind of funding should I be looking at? Where should I be thinking in terms of areas to invest in as I go along? And often, you know, the, the best places to start are accelerators and hiring programs. For, for most kind of just starting up businesses, the rest kind of comes naturally. Mike, was, was this one of the, the W's? I was curious when I saw the presentation. Yeah, so this is, a, this is a, the, the how W. So the W is at the end of this one, but. Uh, <laughs> Got it. <laughs> Thank um, you, that's, that's pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> So what do we do with Fundica? So what we've done at Fundica is we're really helping with where to find, in particular, uh, the non-dilutive funding. So in, in, in Canada, it really covers the full spectrum of funding. In the U.S., we cover all the government funding. So it is a free online solution. It is licensed by different entrepreneur supporting organizations. Um, but for entrepreneurs, it's free. It's 100% free. There's no, no strings attached. 
Uh, and again, it works across North America. So what happens is information comes in through, we have these internet bots, uh, we have advisors, we have a dedicated research team, uh, we have some collaborative partners we're working with, some very strategic ones. Um, we bring all that information together. We have tens of thousands of programs with AI, with algorithms, we kind of organize it so that the entrepreneur can find the most relevant uh, funding programs based on a complete up-to-date uh, data set of funding available. So, um, so that's kind of the, the, the where to find funding. So if we kind of look at um, the best practices, um, so coming back to the very first slide, you know, always move from government to banks to VCs. So government is the cheapest. Yeah, some people say it's a pain in the neck working with government. Yeah, but it's also free money. So um, it's a pain in the neck to pay taxes, but if you're getting a refund, you know, you know, then you're pretty happy. So. Um, start with the government programs, but again, identify only those that are relevant. Use a tool, you know, Fundica or some other other list of programs out there, but find the government programs that are make sense for you and apply to those. If there are none, that's fine, but you know, you can quickly figure out if there are some or not. The second thing is go to banks. Some people say, oh, I don't really like banks, or rather go get VCs. Well, banks are gonna be asked to be repaid a lot less than VCs will, and they're both gonna lean on you to get paid back. So um you know, I, I suggest trying to go through those if you can. Uh, of course, it has to make sense for your situation. Uh, second point is really understand and target each funder. Um, so I think when people go to raise funding, I think probably 90% of the time spent by most entrepreneurs is wasted because they're speaking to people who are just not relevant uh, or they're applying to programs that aren't relevant. So really do your homework. If you're talking to a VC, make sure they've invested in this area before. Make sure they are in the early stages of their fund where they have lots of money. Uh, make sure you're in the geography they're going to consider. Check off all the boxes to make sure they are really them. And you should really, in most cases, I would say narrow it down to 10, 20. You may end up speaking to 100 or 200, but figure out which are your kind of your top uh, funding sources and uh, research them, understand them and go speak to them and all the others kind of leave them uh, aside. Uh, put together a killer, you know, application pitch, uh, kind of goes without saying, but I've just seen too many bad ones. Uh, people wait to the night before to apply and uh, it isn't so hot at the end of the day, like put together a real killer one. Design is super important, you know? Um, it, it's, 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 it's changed the way we, we do things. Design really attracts people they see a nice design they really like that that actually can do a lot to overcome perhaps other weaknesses uh, behind it. So, so, you know, make sure to put that together. But again, it should have great design. It should have great content. It should have, you know, a compelling story. Um, develop a win-win relationship. Um, again, something that should be common sense. But if you're dating someone, um, which is what you end up doing with a, with a funder, uh, you're there for the long term and you can't be begging them to get married. Uh, you can't be, you know, sending them hundreds of emails to kind of see them the next day. You need to treat them like you want to be treated yourself and it needs to be a on par relationship. They're putting in perhaps millions of dollars, but it's a win for them as much as it is for you for it to really work. So keep that in mind and work towards that. If it's not going to, it's not going there, then it's not going to work long term. Uh, and then move the deal to a close. So this is part science, part art. Uh, you see a lot of deals where people are have they're going to raise money and they're, they've got um, lots of investors, but they can't seem to get it closed. Well, you may have to say, listen, I got a big client to ever be able to service that client. I need to close by the end of February. Uh, you know, I got a couple of great hires. I need that money like within a week. Otherwise, we're not going to get them. So, uh, and you need to do that in a way that's neither desperate but is more, you know, is very opportunistic. So. Um, it's, it's a bit of an art, but these are what I would say be the best practices. Mike, do you find there are some founders that hire an advisor or someone, some expert to help them with a the fundraise? Do you think that's a good idea in some cases, or would you recommend not doing that? So, um, I think if the founder needs help, absolutely you should hire somebody, um, and they can help them with all different types of funding. 
Um, ultimately, if you're going to pitch, especially to equity, so to angels or VCs, um, and to a certain degree, even the banks, you probably need to be well trained so that you can do the pitch yourself. But having someone behind you is always a smart thing if they're a good person. Uh, for the government forms, you know, again, depending on your expertise, you may be able to actually get someone to do all the work for you and you just correct, you know, kind of collect the, the refund. Um, but it, you know, you don't necessarily need to be develop that personal relationship or for the ones you need a bit of a personal relationship, you have to ultimately do it yourself, but you can't have someone behind you who's showing you what slides to do, training you to make sure you present well and, and all those things. That makes sense. I probably want to see the, the person that's behind the company be the one asking me for money, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. You want to see, you want to get it from the horse's mouth, right? So. <laughs> exactly. Um, so I don't know if you'll cover this later, but do you find there are some, are there some um, programs, government programs that we should stay away from that are inefficient? Yeah. So and there are some excellent government programs and there are those that are they're not really the, the great program. So programs that are very um, localized, very small, um, those who target that, you know, have limited funding, um, you know, those that are, are some of the, uh, the criteria are difficult to understand, you know, basically programs that are difficult to access or understand or work with. Those are the ones where I would, um, suggest that they're they're not as you know not as relevant or not as good a program for for entrepreneurs um but you know some of the big well-tested you know programs especially let's say a lot of the the federal programs um you know they 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 are clearer larger and often easier to understand do you i do i fit into that program or not and right now, the R&D uh, credit is a huge one. It's a tax season. We are following up with everyone who, who might be a candidate for this or a good uh, prospect for this. Um, tell us a little bit about that program in particular. Yeah, so the R&D tax credit is really one of the best programs out there. Uh, it did improve uh, a few years ago when they more or less you know, said you can go out and get $250,000 uh, you know, in a refund. Um, so it's, it's been a program that's, you know, gotten better uh, as well. It was a program for a number of years when they never knew if it was going to be renewed or not. It's gotten so much more permanence, much better ability. And I think the, the management, uh, you know, uh, of the whole program is, is just gotten better. And I would say that's the same case. Um, it's the case in the United States. It's also a similar case in other countries in the world that we see it in. Awesome. Thank you. So the, the last slide I have here, Ramona, so if someone wants to actually go try Fundica, I know we're close to the end of our time, uh, you're welcome to go on. This is one of our um, one of the entrepreneur supporting organizations. So one I'm also so with is called R&D Partner. So you can go to the, this subdomain um, or this link right here, and you can actually try it out again completely free. And you can put in U.S. or Canadian, any, any jurisdiction it would uh, provide the most relevant funding. In the U.S., it would be on the government side. In Canada, it would be all types of funding. I think I have been to, to the website, and I think it's very easy to, to navigate. Do you do you have time? We, we have time if you want to do a quick demo. I don't know how easy it is for, from your end, but happy to take a look now. Sure. Let's go uh, take a little. Okay, we're just going to go in. All right, let me just get this. And I think we have a hello from Paul. Hi, Paul. Thank you for your comment. So can you see yes. my screen? Yes. Okay. So I'm just going actually to the homepage. So this is a... Again, I'm in full disclosure. This is a group I'm also associated with. Uh, we also, but this the same tools used on the the largest uh, credit union in North America is using it. A number of other banks and entrepreneur supporting organizations. This is uh, more of a consultancy. Um, so if you kind of go in here, so we can try a uh, an example. So Ramona, if you want to give me a, a postal code, one zero zero two two. 
<laughs> Easy. Uh, we're going to just go with a typical business. So you want to put a year of creation or incorporation? Uh, 2005. <laughs> okay. Uh, industry? Industry. Let's see. So software or technology? Okay. So we're going to go with IT. Mm -hmm. And uh, oops. the uh, information technology. And did you want AI? Did you e-commerce? Let's do retail. e-commerce. E-commerce, okay. Yes. And again, it could cross into it. Could you know we've done this? Could be in the area of uh, construction or other areas as well. So sometimes IT crosses into there. We really get try to get the the stage or the. What, what point the entrepreneur is at. So is it co-founder, just a founder? Is it one to five employees, six to 50? Six to 50, Ramona? Yes, I had muted myself because there was a little noise here, but yes, that okay. works. And then for <laughs> revenue, again, could be very early stage. So pre-product founder is really just an idea in a basement. Yes. We get the pre-revenue and then we get into revenue. So if six to 50 employees probably were you know, somewhere I'm just guessing, but one to 1.5 to 5 million. That sounds good. Okay. <laughs> and then I'm just going to put in a, um, email, email address and just going to enter yep. password. So what we're going to get basically is all the results for, um, so there's a little the thing where maybe we'll just kind of take it through. There's we call the secondary uh, filter. So we're going to define things a little further. It's mm -hmm. optional. Then we have the different types of funding available. Uh, and then if you like one, you can favorite it and save it in your kind of favorite list. And then, you know, this is just so we're going to go in here. Ramona, and we're going to say, OK, controlling shareholder is it not applicable or is it a young woman or young woman? I like that <laughs> young woman. Yes. Uh, is it a minority? Anything else? Um, no, I think we're good. <laughs> Go with that. Areas of operation. You can put any. Um, you, know, you let me know. I'm just kind of suggesting some things. Are you exporting the product or service? Yes. Okay. Um, buying or leasing? Uh, it, is this it for rent or? Yeah, so you're buying or leasing something. So it would be more like in the equipment area. Leasing is a big one now. <laughs> okay, so we'll put leasing, improving energy efficiency. Yes. Uh, no, no, no for this one. E commerce. <laughs> Developing a new product. Uh, would so what would the would the designs can be considered a new product? Not necessarily the clothing, right? If it's an if we say e commerce, we didn't just find the, the product, but let's say yes, developing a new product. Yeah, and it means it kind of in different senses. So it could be a, a new way of selling on e-commerce or it could be new products within the e-commerce. So I think yes. any of those would work. Modifying or approving a product. Can we select both? Yeah, sure. Okay, great. Academic collaboration. So that means you're looking to work with universities. Yes. <laughs> okay. All right. And then these ones here, acquisition and merger, investment analysis, international partnership succession. I would suggest that the company based on what we've talked about, probably on the early side, we can select these, but I would, I'm kind of thinking we're maybe we're just below before that, but up to you. Yeah, uh, you can pick any, yes. Okay, well, I think we'll just leave it uh, blank then, because it's, okay. this is, I would say like medium to large companies end up with the strategic transactions. Or and if any anyone is joining at this point, we are doing a demo of Fundica, the online platform where you can uh, find funding. And Mike, you can fill in more if you want to. <laughs> sure. Okay. So we're going to hire an intern, any kind of work term, and we're going to look at hiring any kind of full-time employee. Uh, we'll leave training and hiring a contractor for now. We can always come back. Mm -hmm. All right. So we see now that there are the number of grants has gone up. So these are the grants that are recommended. So... Um, Clearly, this is in New York State. This is federal. We may even get a there we see. So let's go take a look at this woman's wow. grant. There's a little description, the funding limits, the eligible expenditures, the guideline. We can actually start the application right here, contact by email, um, or we can actually just send a message right away. Hey, which is 
already pre-filled, but it can be adapted as you like. So if we like this one, we'll say we like it. And then we'll go back to here. And then let's go like look at the tax credits. So there are different tax credits, same kind of thing. Um, you know, these Excelsior job tax credits are obviously strong ones in New York. Um, so if we want to go just take a look at one of them, again, same kind of thing go on. Here we actually also have a contact person. The other program, they didn't provide that. And uh, again, I, I'm going to say, hey, I like this one too. So I kind of go back. And then if we kind of say, let's go see, these are the two we picked. There's one that was also suggested that should go into our favorites. If we decide, ah, you know, I don't like that one. I take it out. Then we have our program. So again, we're focusing on the government programs here. Uh, we are providing some suggestions, but it's really focusing on the government programs. Um, and this is completely free. And if we want to, we can go back in and change it. Um, we can also change our, our company profile. So, um, and if you can see, this is actually a, it's a branded. So this is a, uh, it's R&D partners, but at the end of the day, it's the Fundica technology. It's really just a white labeled here. I think this is powerful to be able to find all the, the what's available in one single platform. I think it's, it's a great tool and it's so easy to use. Yeah. Well, well, thank you. Um, always trying to make it better. So any suggestions are always appreciated as well. Um, so, um, yeah, so that's a bit of the overview and um, I'll kind of. This has been amazing. So thank you so much, Mike, for talking to us about the all the, the five W's of funding, why, when, how, who, why, just to be ready for fundraising, uh, for, talk to us about all the options, government and, and, uh, and private. Uh, I think this was such uh, invaluable information, but I really enjoyed the demo of Fundica and highly recommend that every founder out there checks it out. Uh, tell us how they, again, how they go to, to the platform. And I will also include it uh, in the comments once the video is uh, reposted. Sure, sure. So go to the RD Partners. You can go to that site and then just click find funding. That's probably the easiest way to think of it. That's one of our brands out there or one of the clients that is licensed into the Fundic technology. Um, or you can always reach out to me if someone would like and has questions or comments or not finding something, by all means, it'd be a pleasure to, to respond to that. Yes, connect with Mike Lee on uh, LinkedIn and any other platform that you want people to find you? Any, any platform works, but LinkedIn is probably the one I, I see the most. So. That's not my favorite too. Thank yeah. you so much, Mike. It was a pleasure to have you. And we welcome you back anytime whenever there is something new happening in, in the uh, government grant sector or private uh, funding sector. Just reach out and we will be happy to have you again. Talk to our audience about capital and funding and the how to's. Well, it was an honor to be here. Mama, thank you for, for sharing this with me. And to our audience, thank you for joining us. The, video is going to be reposted it's going to be seated uh seated it's going to be sitting on all the social media platforms you can watch at any time again share with your friends and business peers and uh, join us every second and fourth tuesday of the month where we bring you powerful information and tools to help you grow your business until next time thank you everyone